Sometimes when you do your work, you only focus on your little world. When you come here, you see the people from everywhere and you see the different challenge people are facing. It's also give me more idea about like what we can do to be part of it, the global movement. My name is Andre Banks. I'm the co-founder and executive director of All Out. All Out's a community of two million people in every country around the world who come together to support activists um, in every region as they push to change discriminatory laws and to shift cultural norms. I'm so happy to be here today with um, these two very, very awesome panelists to talk to you a little bit about how we take this movement, take the work that we're doing, and, and bring it online. So I'm going to let Zhao Gong from China and Suzanne um, from Mideast Youth introduce themselves. I'm Suzanne. I'm an Arab-American activist from the online organization Mideast Youth. I'm here representing Ahwa.org, which is the biggest LGBT forum for the uh, Middle East. Hello, my name is Xiao Gang. I'm from Beijing. Uh, I'm working in an organization called Beijing Gender. We have one program called Queer Comrades. And there was a, a first like, long-running LGBT webcast. Uh, we found this in, a, I found this actually in 2007. Before the 2007, there's not a lot like very kind of like a variety of like LGBT image in our society. You started back in 2007. Now it's seven years later. What kind of impact have you seen? Three years ago, I met like, this one university student. She came to the center, and we were screening the film. And after she came to me, she, she says, OK, I'm really happy uh, I met you. I said, OK, then I'm happy to meet you too. And she says, because she was starting watching our show when she was like, in the second year of high school. So, and she find out like, uh, her own community and like, things happening in China and really see the community like, uh, have all, like, doing all the great things and uh, really like, you know, doing all different things, not just you know, like, uh, sit at home and like, crying or something, being gay or lesbian. Yeah. Right. Um, maybe you can talk a little bit, Suzanne, about the context um, when you guys decided to start Ahua and how it sort of evolved. Sure. So Ahua.org was started in 2010 and it was meant to fill a space that really didn't exist before. Ahwa.org was created because the queer issues that um, our, uh, the LGBT community in the Middle East are concerned with are very different from the issues that you know, other queer communities around the world are concerned with. So it was uh, formed to create a space for people to really explore the issues that matter to them when it comes from to society, culture, religion, and political issues. Jagong, I was going to ask you about um, the sort of environment around working on the internet and how that's changed from 2007 to now. Actually, the whole like uh, Chinese, I would say, LGBT movement started with internet. You know, before I think people are more feel like secure, just go online to meet people because also don't have, don't have a lot of uh, space for like uh, LGBT people. There's like 2009, we had one video uh, talking about like uh, lesbian sex. Uh, after three days, we have like a, we have a three million people viewed one show. So how, you know, you can see how interesting people on the uh, lesbian sex. So, but uh, and we have like over thousand like uh, uh, comments, but then ninety percent are very negative. Nowadays, I think still there's a lot negative comments, but things are changing. I think so our community start fighting back. Before, there's nobody kind of like, a, if you have like this kind of hom homophobic comments, like the people being quiet. But now, there's still, I think, the, think the, the comments are really changed. I think the people reaction are changed. Even like non-LGBT people also start reacting on a certain like comments as you cannot say this, why are you saying this? I think that's like, a, I see the great change like because we are building this language, we're building this identity. People know how to use the like, right language to fight back. I think and that's, I think it's a great change on that. A lot of the work that you all are doing is an inspiration to so many people in so many places who are sort of drawn to those struggles, who feel connected to those struggles. Um, and I think what people are, what we're all trying to figure out is what's the right time and place to be good allies? When is it appropriate and how is it appropriate um, for people to support your work and to, to, to really um, help you take it to the next level? 
Many people think that they can speak for queer Arabs and queer Muslims, um, even above uh, queer Muslims and queer Arabs themselves. It seems like everyone has a hand in you know, how they should think and how they should come out and how they should organize, and they don't even listen to the people themselves. So I think one of the ways to keep in mind when it comes to being a good ally is that people's priorities are different. And in Western queer identities, there is such an emphasis on you know, the, the rainbow flag and gay marriage and the right to be gay in the military. A, a queer Palestinian isn't going to be concerned about whether he has the right to wave a rainbow flag outside his house. He's worried about whether his house will be demolished or not. Um, a queer person in Syria, uh, is struggling just to survive, not because that person is queer, but because the government is attacking everyone. One of the themes of today is that LGBT rights are human rights, but I think the corollary is true. Human rights are LGBT rights as well, and the allies have to realize that for the personal and the political intersect a lot more than I think the mainstream LGBT community in the US realizes. We have agreement. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so beautifully said. And uh, I think I'm just add something. I think, yeah, that's true. I think sometimes when I think about what we want to do, it's more like a, what kind of society I'm imagining for, for the future. I think that's why I think for core comrades, we want to create in this uh, space, always have all kind of voice people can say. No matter like uh, right or wrong, I think you just need creating space, uh, creating space for people to deb debate. The future is not just uh, focus on the LGBT rights. We also kind of working on like how we can work with like all civil society movement, not just only focus on the LGBT movement. It's just like how we can link to all civil society movement, make our movement bigger. Like uh, sometimes you just feel like you know you want people to see you, but you don't see them. So I I hope you know in the future we all can see each other, no matter what kind of movement. We should all like to 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 get together to really think about what kind of civil society we want to to have in the future. Yeah. Absolutely, um, and I think it's to me, exciting to think about solidarity in terms of not only what we're doing in public, but what we're doing in private. And I think being able to know and understand these kind of projects better and like lend a hand behind the scenes to make that work happen however it needs to happen feels like a good way forward. So thank you so much. Thank you.